Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing another notebook review that was kindly gifted to me by Scribble and Dot. So if you've been eyeing their journals, here's an honest opinion and pen tests you'll need. Before we start, know that this review is not influenced by Scribble and Dot. Alright, let's get into the review. Scribble and Dot is a UK-based stationery brand their journals come in this beautiful black box with gold foil embossing of their logo. Opening the box, their journal is wrapped in a tissue paper. Inside, there is a thank you card that is sleek and beautifully printed out. Unboxing their journal already gives a nice impression, so now let's jump into the features. This is an E5 size journal that is sold for £14.95, which is equivalent to around $20. It has 160 dotted and numbered 160 GSM pages, vegan fabric hardcover, an elastic closure, dual page markers, pen holder, and a back pocket. They have five dotted journal designs. They sent me the koala, others are monstera leaf, Dachshund, Sloth, and Honeybee. Dachshund and Koala are available at the moment on this category. You may visit their website scribbleanddot.com to see more of their products. This is how it looks like with this sleeve. The category of the product is embossed in gold foil together with the features of the notebook on the front and on the back. I really like how they designed the sleeve because they use a thick and textured paper which gives uniformity and makes the notebook very well presented. Removing the sleeve, you will find the social media handles of the brand on both ends. This is how it looks like without the sleeve. The cover has a velvety texture, the koala design, and the logo is embossed in gold foil as well. I really like how gold the embossing is, and it looks high quality, and it doesn't seem to wear off over the time. The first page of the notebook is a space for your name and the date you started. The print is very minimal and clean. The next page is the brand logo which is actually a great idea to just put the logo because most of the time I personally leave this particular page as it is glued to the first one. There is one blank line page dedicated for key and three pages for the index. There are two bookmarks in black and silver. At the back, the last three blank pages are dedicated for pen test, a black elastic closure, pen holder, and a pocket. The paper is very smooth to the touch and a bright true white. Comparing it to a standard printer paper, they are both white. It's just that the printer paper goes into the daylight tone and the notebook is between white and blue tones. The pages are numbered. In a closer look, the numbers are light gray in an ideal font size. Not too big nor not too small. The dots are 5x5 five five millimeters and are very light in color which I personally like. It's almost invisible when you look at it in the distance. Here you can see how light the dots are comparing to my current journal. The notebook lays flat which is convenient to write with and doesn't need training. Scribble and Dot states that their notebooks are crafted for pens and markers with resistance to bleeding so we'll test that out on the pen test pages at the back. I will also do a paint test to see if it's suitable for painting. All the supplies I'm using in this review are listed on the description box. I'll start with the pen test. First is with my fountain pen. I don't see any feathering on the paper, which is amazing. Then my go-to fine liners, the Sakura Pigma Micron in 0.003 nib, 
thinnest that I have and in 0.03. Next is a Pilot GTEC C4. I can tell you that these pens really glided smoothly on this paper. I'm also testing my Uniball Eye Liquid Ink Pen and my Pilot High Tech Point V7. These pens, however, feathered a little bit. Moving on to my brush pens, starting with my Tombow Fidinoski Hard Tip Brush Pen. I did two layers on the shading for this one, then a Tombow ABT Dual Tip Brush Pen number 26. I'm testing three layers on the brush tip as I always do. Next is the Sakura Koi Coloring Brush Pen in Raw Sienna. Lastly, the Crayola Super Tips in Dark Olive. After the brush pens is a highlighter test using my Stabilo Swing Coal in Peach. I'm also testing gel and metallic pens starting with my white Sakura Gel Roll. I use this not only for writing or drawing on top of a dark color, but also for covering mistakes. So I'd like to see if it matches the color of the paper. Next is the Dong A in khaki and in gold. I also have the Simi Art in yellow gold gel pen. Then some of my thicker nib markers like Artline 900XF gold marker and Uniposka gold paint marker. Finally, for the pen test are alcohol-based pens and markers, which are, of course, not recommended to use but will still do the test to let you see that they are expected to bleed. I have the Touch 10 Dual Tip Sketch Marker, the Pilot Super Color, and Sharpie Permanent Marker. Next is the paint test. I'll be doing three tests for the paint. First is I'm testing solid watercolor on three different techniques. One is pigmented paint with a minimal use of water, then a gradient with a significant amount of water towards the end. Third is a blend of two colors. Second is gouache paint with three tests as well, starting with paint that is right out of the tube, a gradient, and also a blend of two colors, which I wasn't really able to blend well, so please excuse my gouache blending ability. <laughs> Lastly is the gold watercolor, one is with less water and the second is more. Now let's see the other side of the test pages if they're bleed through or ghosting. For the pens, the fountain pen and liquid ink pens had a touch of bleeding, so I'd recommend to use a dry ink rather than wet. There's a slight ghosting on the third layer of Tombow Dual Tip and Sakura Koi Brush Pen and bleeding on the third layer of Crayola Super Tips and Stabilo Highlighter. The alcohol-based markers bled as expected. For the paint test, slight bleeding on the gradient test for the solid watercolor and on the gold watercolor where I used more water. I'm impressed how the paper holds up water and only resulted to little wrinkling and it didn't affect the page next to it. Overall, this notebook is a nice option if you want to start bullet journaling. It's very elegant and is cheaper considering that it has a 160 GSM paper. I like how stylish, soft to the touch, yet strong the cover is. I also love their anticipation that they included features such as key, index, and pen test pages which are very useful. The paper is really smooth. I love using my go-to pens with it. The paint test result is really impressive. 
Most of all, the light dots are my personal favorite feature of this notebook. The drawback for this koala journal would be the cover is likely to catch dust or dirt from your desk since it's a dark color and very light dots can be a challenge for you who have low vision causing you to lean closer to have a better look. Also, if you are to use fountain pens, your choice of ink is to be considered. So if you are looking for a cheaper notebook with great paper quality and usability, this notebook is for you. And if you prefer a stylish journal with subtle dots, this is highly recommended. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning on having scribble and dot as your journal or if you already have one, I'd love to read your experience. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more stationary reviews. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!